Hey, so this one's going to have be a multi-viewer question video. One, two, three, four questions. Uh, could Charlotte maybe become Queen of England? Uh, uh, Harry, does he feel safe in England? Um, Beto O'Rourke and Governor Abbott in the Texas uh, governor's race. How's that going to go? And then Bobby Gen Gentile Corey, why did I try to say her name and I didn't try to say everybody else's? But anyway, Bobby uh, wants to know, James Comey with the FBI who said he messed up that whole election and really gave it to Trump, is he going to pay for that? So I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So I thought these were great questions, and everybody who asked them are wonderful viewers. The first uh, viewer is uh, in the magic triple X and wants to know: Is there a possibility that Charlotte uh, could be queen uh, someday? That's interesting. Then Leo Buddy, another viewer, says: A uh, Harry, um, does he feel safe uh, in London? or England, uh, probably in general, because that was his whole beef, not getting any protection. Then Gma5, who's been with me forever, love you Gma, and she says Beto O'Rourke and Greg Abbott, who's the Texas governor, and Beto O'Rourke, who's running for governor in Texas as a Democrat, Abbott is the Republican, uh, how's that going to go? And then finally, uh, Bobby uh, Gentil Corey says, you know, James Comey of the FBI, you know, he is the one during that 2016 race uh, where he came out and said, oh, we're going to investigate Hillary again, and then that through all the way over to Trump. And so is he gonna pay for that? We'll find out. Okay, so we're going to get right into it. We have four questions, viewer questions. First one, Into the Magic Triple X asks, Charlotte, is there a possibility that she'll be queen? I don't. Um, I think I spoke a little bit about this in a uh, video quite some time ago, uh, but um, about Prince uh, George. But Charlotte, will she be queen? Um, there's three other questions that I have too. Leo Bunny asks. Uh, does Harry feel safe now in London? And I might even add, will he feel safe in London? And then GMA5, thank you, GMA, says uh, Beto O'Rourke in Texas, the Texas race for governor, against Greg Abbott. You know, can I read on that? So I will. And then uh, Bobby Gentil Corey uh, says, remember James Comey, the director of the FBI, who said we're going to investigate Hillary and then right before the election and her, her numbers went down and Trump's numbers went up and then Trump fired him because he wasn't loyal enough. I mean, what more do you want somebody to do? So will he pay for screwing Hillary? So that's pretty specific. I mean, he might pay for other things, but will he pay for um, what he did to Hillary? So we'll see. Um, let's take a minute for meditation. So right off the top, into the magic, triple X, will Charlotte be queen? Let's see how this works out. Uh, let's do let's do three cards to see how it's going, and then uh, with an eye toward maybe another three, that would be a full uh, dyadic uh, cross with six cards. So will Charlotte, will Charlotte be queen? Three cards. One, two, three. That's something you really want to ask, and I'll never know. I'll be long gone before that might happen. But um, let's see. First card, will Charlotte be queen? 
Well, this is the Knight of Pentacles. And the Knight is the fighter of the royal uh, suite, uh, the royal court. Uh, Pentacles is worth. And, you know, this shows up to me as Charlotte. This is Charlotte. She's the knight. She's the fighter. She's not the queen. She's not the king. But, um, but with value. Uh, she might very well be that generation's uh, Princess Anne. You know, Princess Anne is considered the hardest working royal, and maybe that's how Charlotte will turn out. But the next card as for whether Charlotte might be queen is temperance. Well, you know, this is telling us that she certainly will be someone, again, like Princess Anne, who has, who uh, we may find out that she has the uh, temperance uh, to, and it makes sense too, her being the middle child of an older brother and a younger brother, she being the uh, peacemaker. And then the last card for Charlotte is the Queen of Wands. Now, this is interesting. It's not the emperor. It's not the hierophant, which you might expect for the monarch to be represented by, but it's a queen. And remember, there's four queens in the pack. So it's not necessarily indicative that she will be the queen, but more it says to me that she will be the queen of getting things done, of, of plans, of actions, of putting a fire into something. And I think that's exactly what the cards are saying. And we're not going to need to go, need to go further, further this. Will Charlotte be queen? Now, she'll always be the royal servant to the king uh, with all of her value the knight and um, she will have a temperament a temperament that's well suited for that which will make her a good advisor to the, her brother and then um, the final card of being queen of wands she will be the queen of actions um, power uh, getting things done so she will have some influence on uh, what happens but that her i think her brother uh, will be the monarch now the next question is leo bunny and Leo Bunny says, uh, Harry, does he feel safe in London? She actually asked this question before Harry had come to London this time and wanted to know if, if will Harry feel safe? Well, that's already happened. So let's say, does Harry feel safe in London? And we'll do that with another three cards. Okay. Well, Harry, does he feel safe in London? It might uh, go another three cards. We'll see. So, uh, does Harry feel safe in London? The signifier card, or the first card up, is the Five of Swords. Swords, truth, justice, rules, and law. And this is an abuse of power. And this is how he feels about London. This is how he feels about London. And that doesn't say safe to me. Next card uh, does Harry feel safe in Lon London, is uh, the lover's card. And this is the major arcana, and these are pairings. And I think the fact is that he will always be coupled uh, with that country, of course. And so it's like a difficult marriage or a brother or sister that you can't stand. Uh, the last card of this grouping of three, four, um, it's a wheel of four. So it's not a guaranteed thing. Um, uh this these three cards really say it all. It's not a guaranteed thing. It's a, and he will always feel that it's a crapshoot. It's a risky situation. So uh, does he feel uh, uh, safe in London? Well, th that's an abuse of power. Truth, justice, rules, and law have been abused. That's what that represents to him. That place, and uh, but he will always be a, a partner with it, uh, inextricably, and uh, and then he sees it as it's all a crapshoot when he's there. That's a shame. So now, GMA5 uh, wants to know about uh, Beto O'Rourke and Greg Abbott. And I tell you what, that Greg Abbott, the Republican governor of Florida, is just uh, trying to out-Trump uh, Ron DeSantis. Um, just insane. And then, uh, and what's so funny is that because of the figure of him in a wheelchair it makes you want to be charitable toward him, but it's not the way it works out. And then uh, Beto O'Rourke, who just brought a father of two um, teenage football players in their high school, brought uh, that man to tears. It he was a staunch Republican who was endorsing, endorsing uh, Beto and uh, his uh, feelings, uh, three cards to start with on this one, his feelings on that just brought him to tears. Uh, thankful for Beto and was a Republican going to vote and his mother was going to vote for Beto. Beautiful thing. So three cards, uh, GMA five uh, regarding Beto and Abbott. I might need to do more cards on this, I'm going to guess. First card, Beto and Abbott. Well, Beto's a star. Okay, so that's great. 
um, because this uh, reading is primarily about Beto, I feel like. But uh, Beto against Abbott, yeah, he's a star. Uh, the wow. And so the next card up for Beto versus Abbott is practicing your craft, getting your value down just exactly right. Okay, and that's where he's at. And then the final card, ah, is, uh, well, this could be uh, interesting. So this is the Six of Swords, uh, moving out of troubled waters, swords being truth, justice, rules of law. And so this could, uh, I think what this means, because this is a very protective figure here, <coughs> moving uh, people they love out of uh, troubled water, being protected by truth, justice, rules of law. And I think that's what he, I think this is Texas and this is Beto. So um, let's see if I can do three more cards on Abbott. And see how that works out. Three more cards on Abbott. So this shows Beto working really hard uh, with the right intention. So how does Greg Abbott, what can the cards tell us about him? Uh, let's do one card. Okay, Knight of Swords, Truth, Justice, Rules, and Law, fighting for what he thinks is right. Let's hope that's the case, because I hate to think he's just that evil. Next card for Abbott is, look, Knight of Wands making things happen. So this is a strong um, opponent for Beto. And the last card for Abbott is, look at this, so this is short-term plans, uh, actions, uh, motions, that's what the wands are. Uh, two plans is really something not far into the future. So if I was going to take that as three cards as advice to uh, Abbott, I'd say I would give him credit for his fight, for fighting for, I guess, what is his plan is or what he believes is right let's just give him the benefit of the doubt but certainly a fighter for what he uh intends to make happen with that wand and then um but in the short term i would say don't make uh long-term plans okay uh you, you're gonna have to think about doing something else okay so then we get uh, bobby gentile Corey says james comey the former fbi director so this was amazing so he came out and just as before the vote was going down he comes out and says the FBI is going to reopen the investigation into Hillary Clinton Trump is through the moon and uh, who knows if the information that was brought forth was some sort of um, leak or enhancement done by the Russians who Trump had been begging to help him so and then in the end uh, Trump fires him because he's not loyal enough. He won't pledge his loyalty to him in the first meeting. He says, I, Trump tells him, I need someone to be loyal. I need your loyalty. And Comey just keeps saying, well, I will always be true to the Constitution. I'll certainly be loyal to the country. So James Comey, will he pay somehow for regarding uh, moving that election away from Hillary. Let's do six cards. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. What can the cards tell us about James Comey as far as justice for Hillary? Okay, so the signifier of this whole thing is uh, wands are actions, plans, uh, fire, uh, moving things forward. But the, in the five of wands, uh, these guys are all tangled up and not making any progress whatsoever. It's kind of pointless uh, arguing. And, um, and that's the signifier of this question as to whether uh, James Comey will pay for what happened to Hillary. And this is what was going on. And maybe it's something you wouldn't think about taking quite so seriously. The challenge to that uh, is the tower moment. So I look at this a couple of ways. Either um, what was going on at the time, which was this in the political environment or in the investigation environment, let's say. Um, and then what happened after that was a disaster. So you can th certainly think of it that way. I think that we're going to have to pin it. And then the uh, base of this reading for Comey versus Hillary, secrets being revealed. Of course, that's what it was all about, the secrets coming out. And then in the past of this, strength. Uh, strength in the past at that time. Well, this is an interesting read because Hillary certainly w had the strength of what was um, of, of the election at that point. In the sky at that time, emperor. So yeah, what we're aiming for here was to be the top, to be the, uh, the, the best. So these cards are really wanting more to tell a story than to get right to an answer. 
And then the uh, final outcome for this part, we probably have to go, oh, is the Hierophant. Well, we just came to the end. So is the government. Let's read it again. So will Comey pay a price for what happened to Hillary? And, but this is the is what the cards chose to say. They don't always ask, answer your direct question. Um, the signifier of that question was just all the strife, all the um, pointless um, accusations that were flying around at the time. And they were uh, challenged by the tower moment that that re revelation actually became. And it was all underscore, underscored by the secrets that uh, were revealed. And the strength that had been Hillary's uh, was certainly gone. As a matter of fact, the strength that the country had at that point, uh, that was the beginning of sapping in a way. And then the, in the sky of this, of course, was the emperor you know, to uh, become the top dog. And then the uh, final uh, outcome of the thing is that we did have a hierophant. We did have a government. Uh, and it's, um, and we know how that turned out. Well, we'll do four more cards just for the heck of it. Because um, I want to know, will Comey pay what was done to Hillary? The uh, self of that very question, look at that. Well, nightmares. So it has been a torment for him what happened the cards are telling us that in the environment of in the environment of believing that you were the knight bringing forth truth just as rules walk and law so this these cards seem to you know suggest that you know he thought he was doing the right thing and it's been a nightmare and the hopes and the fears then for all of this well it's it's this nine of wands all these actions all these plans just really being embattled the fears um, and then the final uh, for that is the High Priestess, which is an interesting card to come out at the end of this because the High Priestess is the one who could almost pass judgment. And this isn't a godly thing that we're talking about. This is more something that you would think High Priestess would have uh, dealing uh, on behalf of a government almost. So I'm going to say it's more of an internal justice for him into what happened. And let's face it, he did lose his job. But, I mean, he's probably got a fantastic retirement. But I will say that, yeah, what's written down in the records, the way this is recorded, the way this is looked back on uh, in history, won't uh, look favorably uh, on James Comey. So that's everyone's questions today. And I hope you agree with what I said. So viewers, that's the uh, draws for today. Thank you so much for asking the questions. It means a lot to me that you, you know, interact with the channel and, and I just love it. So I hope that uh, met your expectations. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. So this is one of my all time favorite uh, decks. So this is the Smith Waite uh, Tarot deck, the Centennial Edition. And um, there's two boxes here, and I'll explain what happened. Is uh, when I was ordering uh, uh, this uh, deck, um, I think, I think it was Amazon. I'm not 100% sure. But um, it wasn't clear that, that one of the things I was ordering was just a deck of cards, and the other thing I was ordering was a commemorative set. Okay, so uh, we'll talk about them separately. So the cards themselves are terrific. So these are, as you may have heard me say, if you've watched some of my videos and watched me use these cards, uh, these cards are the um, supposed to be the uh, most true to the original artwork of Pamela Coleman Smith. This is her initial, Pamela Coleman Smith. Uh, th these are the closest to her original artwork or interpretation that she and um, and uh, uh, Wait uh, came to agreements on for the way they would be depicted. Before I turn these over, I'm going to tell you. So one of the things I love about cards is when you, there's something special you can use the cards for, a special way you can identify with the cards that's only secret to you. Maybe I shouldn't like that, but I do like that. For instance, uh, these cards, you can tell from the back of these cards whether they are upright or whether they are inverted before you flip them over. And here's how. In this uh, little um, flourish here, uh, it's almost a rose in a rose. It reminds me a little bit of the Tudor rose, but it's, it's not quite that. But uh, if you are looking at this card, the back of this card, and you see this little leaf is, is sort of pointing in front of this signature, then you know that this card, when you flip it over, is going to be upright. However, if you see that the leaf is pointing behind the signature, you know that this card is going to be inverted. So see, a quick glance, it's not very obvious to you. But once you look at it for a minute and you know that secret, now you know what's going to happen when you turn this card over. So let's use an example. This one is pointing um, before the signature. 
So we can see that this card is in the upright position. This one is pointing after the signature, and you can see that it's in the inverted position. So, so there you go. Now, the cards themselves are great. I mean, I love the coloring of the cards. They've got kind of a, a grayish, um, a brownish gray overtone, almost a misty, kind of a London fog kind of a feel to the overall. It's like someone painted the cards and then went back and did a treatment on them to make them look kind of, so I'm not, I don't know if that's how Pamela Coleman Smith uh, created the art. I haven't seen her original art for this, obviously. Um, I'm sure some people have, but, um, but that's what's great about these cards. It kind of gives them a built-in patina. that's not real, you know, it's fake, but it still makes them nice and mystical. And so uh, that's what's interesting about these cards. Now, the uh, at first I was disappointed that I had ordered two um, sets of the same cards, but then um, I understood that it was a good thing. And I'll show you why that is. Okay, so now this is the commemorative set of the Pamela Coleman Smith uh, artist of the Rider Waite Tarot deck, uh, featuring the Smith Waite Tarot Centennial Edition deck, which is this. So uh, it comes in this amazing, amazing container. I mean, I can't even really call it a box. It's, it's like a beautiful showcasing a lifetime of artwork by Cam Pamela Coleman Smith. And um, so it's really cool. And wait till you see how it works. So you open this treasure chest up and you've got this beautiful uh, finish here and you've got wonderful little tabs where you can pull back the, uh, the covers and see what's inside. And what is inside is a, a pack of the cards. Uh, and in truth, what's happened is um, these were the cards that were wrapped up inside this box and uh, these cards uh, came in that box. But um, I got this first, and so I wanted to use the cards, so I opened it up, and oh, look at that, and I don't like that. This has to be tucked down in there, so there's a couple things that aren't perfect. But uh, so I took the cards out of here, opened it up, started using them, and then the other cards came, and I realized, oh, well, I can make this a complete set if I put these in here. What's in here? Of course, you have the cards, and uh, then you have a nice little bag uh, to keep them in, if, uh, if that's how you're going to keep your cards, and so many people do. But uh, I've just chosen to try to leave these cards in kind of a pristine condition. And then on this side is where all the treasure happens. The first thing you have is this booklet, The Artwork and Times of Pamela Coleman Smith, Artist of the, tarot, tarot, of the Rider Waite Tarot Deck by Stuart R. Kaplan and Lynn uh, Arjo, I suppose. So this is who wrote this book. In this book, it tells you all about uh, you know, not all about, but it's a, it's, it's, it's a very good information about Pamela Coleman Smith. It's a lot of her art that's not related to tarot and explanations of how that art came to be. I mean, this is just a fascinating book, and I love it. I love it a lot. So there's that. The next thing that was in here, are, these are actually postcards. Okay, so these are postcards, and all of these are the art of Pamela Coleman Smith. So, uh, and then this book talks about these postcards and why they come to be, and they all have a very interesting uh, story, So, which I won't go into now, but if you think you'd like to know, you should order these cards. So, very interesting uh, stuff here. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, next thing you're going to get is you get some uh, larger pieces that uh, this is Pamela Coleman Smith, who I understand like to be called Pixie uh, as a nickname, and she's a lovely person. This um, is uh, someone that she knew, a, a stage uh, actress at the time, and um, and there's even a little uh, message down here. The the name of this person is Mistress Page, and then you are a you are Mary, so am I. Ha ha, uh, Ellen Terry. So uh, I'm not sure now, but the the book explains all of this to you. Then you get, uh, this is an example of just some black and white work she done for, for, I don't know what it doesn't tell you on here, but it does tell you in the book. And then this is some more examples of what she might have done for playbills or uh, other ways. You know, artists have to make a living, so they use their talent of making art to uh, sell and, and do other things. So love, love, love everything that came with this. And um, amazing. Now, the final thing, and I've, I've lost the little uh, ribbon, but also this uh, has a ribbon here that, that helps you pull everything out, which is so smart and so good. I don't know who thought of it first, but it's a great uh, use of that. And then you have here the actual uh, pictorial key to the tarot. So some of you may have seen me using uh, this book, which is the pictorial key to the tarot by weight. And uh, so this is just another uh, representation of that, but just in a different book. And it all comes in here. The one thing that you're missing here, I don't think the cards 
are in this book? No, the pictures of the cards uh, aren't in here, but it's terrific. Everything else is true to that first book. Uh, this one, however, which I bought separate from an uh, online bookstore, uh, does have uh, depictions of the cards in it, as you can see. So that's very useful to use that all the time. So very handy to have. And then finally, like so many of these uh, decks, this gives you some uh, examples of some spreads you can use and how you might read them. And so everything, everything, everything about this um, this package uh, is exactly um, the best that you want to get in a in a, in a gift. I've got, this is the one little misgiving here. Maybe I'll, I'll work on that later. But um, so nice. So that's been the tour of these cards. And I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm Mark, My Journey Through Tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now. You really make a big difference. Thank you.